कसले चिन्ता छ कसले बहस गर्छ हामीले धेरैलाई नेता बनायो धेरैलाई प्रधानमन्त्री बनायो धेरैलाई मन्त्री बनायो तर हाम्रो बारेमा कसैले बोलेन हाम्रो बारेमा कसैले समस्याको समाधान खोजेन आज तपाईहरु क्यामेरा लिएर देशको कुना काप समझाउनु हुन्छ अनि तपाईहरुलाई छ नि कति समस्या आर्थिक अभाव छैन त्यति त्यति राज्यको ध्यान गएको छ कुनै पनि पत्रकारले समाचार लेखेको भरमा दुख दिन पाइदैन लोकतन्त्रमा विधिको शासन भएको मुलुकमा अदालतले पनि समाचार हटाउनको लागि निर्देशन दिने होइन तपाई सुरक्षित हुनुपर्छ म पनि सुरक्षित हुनुपर्छ कुनै पत्रकारले केही लेखेकै भरमा केही देखाएकै भरमा केही बोलेकै भरमा दुख दिने जुनसुकै निकालेकै पनि ऋषि धमल शरमजी पत्रकारको पक्षमा रहनेछ कसैलाई बोलाउने बयान लिने दुख दिने त्यो पञ्चायत व्यवस्था हो राजाको शासन हो हो लोकतन्त्र हो विधिको शासन भएको देशमा सञ्चार कर्मीले बोल्न नपाउने लेख्न नपाउने आफ्नो कुरा राख्न नपाउने हामीले किन ल्याएको प्रजातन्त्र म नेपालमा सङ्घीय लोकतान्त्रिक गणतन्त्र ल्याउनको लागि सत्र पटक गिरफ्तार भएको छु बैसठी त्रिसठी सालको जन आन्दोलन सत्र पटक म हिरासतमा बसेको मान्छे किन सिस्टमको लागि तपाईँहरूलाई अभिव्यक्ति स्वतन्त्रताको लागि अनि यहाँ कसैले बोल्यो भन्दैमा बोलाउने भएन दुःख दिने यो कदापि स्वीकारी छैन उहाँको छोरी सडक दुर्घटनामा मृत्यु भयो र उहाँले नेपालमा जुन सडक दुर्घटना भइरहेको छ त्यसको पीडा उहाँको मनमा पसेछ र उहाँले मलाई भन्नुभयो म छोरीको नाममा एउटा अस्पताल बनाउँछु म तपाईँलाई स्यालुट गर्न चाहन्छु अभिनन्दन गर्न चाहन्छु त्यो ग्रेट लेडी आई एम अलवेज रेस्पेक्ट यू फेरि पनि राम्रा मान्छेहरू छन् विश्वमा नभएका होइन साथीहरू म धेरै कुरा राख्न चाहन्न आज प्रोफेसर साहेबले राख्नुहुन्छ सबै कुरा आदरणीय पत्रकार साथीहरू आज विश्व प्रेस स्वतन्त्रता दिवस र विश्वभर प्रेस दिवस मनाइरहँदाखेरि नेपालमा एकजना अमेरिकन जर्नलिस्ट हुनुहुन्छ एकदम नेपाललाई माया गर्ने उहाँले चारवटा विषयमा नेपालको बारेमा समाचार बनाउने डकुमेन्ट्री बनाउने र महिलाहरूको बारेमा खास गरी समाजमा पछिल्लो समय भएको महिला हिंसाको बारेमा उहाँ सशक्त रूपमा नारी सशक्तिकरणको पक्षमा उभिएको एउटा फेमस जर्नलिस्ट हो प्रोफेसर हो उहाँको आफ्नै किसिमको विशेषता छ त्यसैले आज हामीले उहाँलाई रिपोर्टर्स क्लब नेपालमा किन बोलायौँ त रिपोर्टर्स क्लब नेपाल आज विश्व प्रेस स्वतन्त्रता दिवसको अवसरमा सबै सञ्चार कर्मीहरूलाई म शुभकामना दिन चाहन्छु नेपालको प्रेस जगत सङ्कटमा छ तर पनि नेपालका पत्रकारहरूले जस्तो सुकै कठिन समयमा पनि जस्तो सुकै चुनौती पनि पार गर्दै नेपालको पत्रकारितालाई नेपालको सञ्चार जगतलाई तपाईँले सगरमाथा जस्तो उचाइमा पुर्याउनु भएको छ तपाईँहरूको समस्या मलाई पनि थाहा छ म पनि शरमजी पत्रकार हुँ र हाम्रो एउटा सम्बन्ध जुन छ नेपाली सञ्चार जगत जहिले पनि परिवर्तनको पक्षमा जहिले पनि जनताको पक्षमा आवाज बिनहरूको आवाज बनेर आयो जस्तो सुकै चुनौतीको सामना गर्दै जति सुकै समस्या आए पनि नेपाली प्रेस एक भएर लडेको छ अहिले पनि नेपाली प्रेसमाथि खतरा छ नेपाली प्रेस सुरक्षित छैन नेपाली प्रेस सङ्कटमुक्त छैन नेपाली सञ्चार जगत सञ्चार कर्मीहरू जहिले पनि आक्रमणको तारो बनिरहेका छन् समाचार लेखेकै भरमा कतिपय साथीहरू गिरफ्तारीमा परे कतिपय साथीहरू हिरासतमा बस्नु पर्यो कतिपय साथीहरू आक्रमणको शिकार बन्न पर्यो रिपोर्टर्स क्लब समग्र पत्रकारिताको क्षेत्रको लागि एउटा प्रतिबिम्ब हो एउटा साझा संस्था हो 
नेपाली संचार जगत में रिपोर्टर्स क्लब को इतिहास लमो यो इतिहास में रिपोर्टर्स क्लब ने खेले भूमिका को बारे में मधे कुछ बताओ चाहन्न तर आज तब साक्षर भाँचु शरमजी पत्रकार को हक हित रिकार को लगी ऋषि धमला जस्तों सुक परिस्थिति में लड़ी रहने मैं जस्ते शरमजी पत्रकार हूँ मैं साथ में छु ने श्रमजी पत्रकार को संकट डरलाग्द जिससे कलम चला कैमेरा चला अथवा सोशल मीडिया प्रयोग करने काम कुछ सोशल मीडिया में तब सक्रियता जो बढ़े तर आज तब जिस सूचना नया दी धरें दुख कर देशभरी घूम तर तब पीड़ा कति डरलाग्द कतिपय साथी तलब पाँग कतिपय साथी को पीड़ा डरलाग्द मैं आज तब साक्षी राखर भन्न मन लगता प्रेस को अवस्था ये दुख स संचार जगत राज्य समेत मतलब छेन सरकार का मतलब छेन संचार जगत कुछ अवस्था पुग्यो संचार जगत में के समस्या संचारकर्मी कसरी खाई रह कसरी उ परिवार पाली रह चिंता कसरी बहस कर हमें धर नेता बनाय धर प्रधानमंत्री बनाय धर मंत्री बनाय तर हम बारे में कसले बोलेन हम बारे में कसले समस्या को समाधान खोजेन आज तब कैमेरा लेकर देश को कुना काम समझान अभी तब कति समस्या तो आर्थिक अभाव छह राज्य को ध्यान गई मेरे एजेंडा को अब ने सब पत्रकार संपन्न बनाने कलमजीवी शरमजीवी एक अब हम देश में कुने पत्रकार कसले आक्रमण गए सब भाला ऋषि धमला बैकबोन बने उ तब साथ में रहने पत्रकार जगत लाइव सबल बनाने व्यवसायीकरण करने पत्रकारिता में आमूल परिवर्तन आज को आवश्यकता होते मैं वहाँ लज रिपोर्टर्स क्लब ने कार्यक्रम में बोला अमेरिका जस्तों प्रेस फ्रीडम भाई मूलुक को एकजना टप मोस्ट पपुलर जर्नलिस्ट प्रोफेसर जिससे नेपाल जैसे भी माया कर रहा को एटा अभियान वहाँ मैं हिजो सुना मैं भेटी सके वहाँ को छोरी सड़क दुर्घटना में मृत्यु भो रहाँ में जो सड़क दुर्घटना भैर इस पीड़ा वहाँ को मन में पसे रहा मैं भन्न भो मोरी को नाम में एटा अस्पताल बनाऊ मैं सैल्यूट करना चाहूँ अभिनंदन करना चाहूँ द ग्रेट लेडी आई फलोज रेस्पेक्ट यू विश्व में नाका हो साथी मेरे कुछ राखन चाहन्न आज प्रोफेसर साहब ने राख्ह सब यो यह गलत हो कुछ पत्रकार ने समाचार लेख को भार दुख दिन पाइन लोकतंत्र में विधि को शासन भाई मूलुक में अदालत ने समाचार हटा को निर्देशन दिने हो तुरक्षित हो मैं सुरक्षित होने पत्रकार ने कई लेखेक भर में कई देखाएक भर में कई बोलेक भर में दुख दिने जुनसुक निगाल ऋषि धमला शरमजी पत्रकार को पक्ष में रहने तेरे तब दिने तो काम कदापि हमें स्वीकार होते कसला बोलाने बयान लिने दुख दिन के पंचायत व्यवस्था हो राजा को शासन हो तो लोकतंत्र हो विधि को शासन भग देश में संचारकर्मी ने बोलना पाने लेखना पाने आप पाने हमी क्या प्रजातंत्र मे संघ लोकतांत्रिक गणतंत्र लियान को लगी सत्रह पटक गिरफ्तार बैसठी तिरसठी साल को जन आंदोलन सत्रह पटक म हिरासत में बस को मानी किस्टम को तब अभिव्यक्ति स्वतंत्रता को अभी यहाँ कसले बोले भन्द बोला दुख दिने ये कदा भी स्वीकार संसार जगत एक आज विश्व 
प्रसन्नता दिवस को दिन महत्वपूर्ण लाइफ अभिनंदन करते हैं संसार जगत लाइफ सैल्यूट करते हैं वरना चांसू संसार कर्मी एकता आज को आवश्यकता संसार जगत को एकता आज को आवश्यकता और इसी धमला जेल पर नहीं सरल जीव पत्रकार के साथ मरानी चाहिए मैं यहाँ लाइफ वेलकम करना चाहूँगा Uh, speaking of world press freedom, I teach uh, in college about the First Amendment in the United States. Have you guys ever heard of it? Yes. Of course. It's all about the freedom of speech and the freedom of press. So it's so nice to meet you all. Uh, my name is Lauren Yanks. And my first question is, where are all the women reporters? How, who here? Why? So little. I, I see my daughter back there. I see one. Yes. Where are they? We're not getting the women's voices, the girls' voices. Half, if not 52% of this room should be girls and women covering this. Um, a little bit about me. I'm not sure what you've heard so far. I came to Nepal about 15 years ago to... Uh, learn about trafficking because I was uh, reading a lot about children's trafficking and trafficking of women um, into the sex industry and many other things. So I came as a journalist to write about it, but I also came as an educator and worked with many of these women and girls who had been rescued. And I also taught many little kids and I fell in love with Nepal because you're very lovable, yes? Okay, so, um, uh, but I came here and I felt that the education needed a lot of improvement. It was a lot by rote, and there needed to be a greater emphasis on a girl's education. And that is something that I feel very passionately about, and what the Blue Butterfly Foundation represents. Okay? Uh, are you understanding me? Any questions so far? Can you say woohoo? <laughs> World Press Freedom Day, woohoo! Any questions? Okay. I take one sip of Coca-Cola Zero because I am addicted, <laughs> which is very American of me. Okay. I'm going to give you some statistics, and then I'm going to tell you the two projects that we're doing. When a girl is educated, when a woman knows how to read, her child has a 50% more chance of living. Okay? It spreads out to the whole family. When a woman makes money, she puts 90% of those earnings back into her family and the community. How many, how much percentage do you think men give back from their earnings? According to the United Nations. Any guesses? 30%. 30%. What are you all doing? Terrible men. I'm just kidding. Um, so, it totally changes the dynamics of a society when you have half of the brain power, getting educated and getting empowered and having a voice and working in, say, journalism and utilizing their free speech. When women are empowered, there is less war, there is better health care, there is better education, there is less corruption. Not that Nepal would know about that, okay? So there are so many reasons to really emphasize education of girls. And we need to raise the consciousness of both the women and the men to understand that if you want to have an innovative, an innovative and creative society, you need to make sure that everybody is being stimulated up here. Um, thank you. So now I want to go into a, the two main projects that we are doing at the Blue Butterfly Foundation. But first, I want to ask any questions at all? 
Are you a little afraid of me? I won't bite. <laughs> Maybe I bite a little. Okay, so um, the first thing we're doing right now, over COVID, before COVID, I used to come all the time, and I lived here for two years as a visiting professor, and I started many different schools for the poorest of the poor. And then COVID hit, and I could no longer, I could not come here for a while. <clears throat> so I started to work with the Nepalese immigrant population in New York, specifically the women. There are many, many Nepalese immigrants in New York who are living in very, very difficult circumstances. And they are away from their families, and they do not have their support system. So we are creating a resource center that offers language skills, training, uh, how to work in America, cultural competency, legal help, and all the things that, and uh, mental health, all the things that are really um, getting in the way. There's a lot of people who think that coming to America, their troubles will be over and everything is paved with gold. But instead they come, they're exploited, often trafficked, and living in very dire circumstances. So one of our programs is to create this research center and help the immigrants that are there that are drowning and living in very difficult situations. Our second project now is also taking the kids that I've worked with for many years and have supported, there are some who rise to the top, and I'm bringing them to the United States to get an education for college so that they can come back and be the future leaders of Nepal. Right now, I have four kids that I've brought over. Two of them are living with me. They're going to be human rights lawyers. One is now running at Harvard's Center for Cancer. Very wonderful. Um, and now I'm bringing over two young women, both of who are here today. And they want to come back, all of them, when they are done with their education and create more equity in Nepal, more gender equality, greater justice, raise their voices for the men and the women, for the education, and for any other injustices that rise up. And so, we are raising funds to help gain their education and also to help with the children that we support and educate here as well. Now, I've talked for a while. I would love if any of you had any questions or thoughts. Were you able to understand me? Yes? No? Ali Ali? What? What are they saying? Where, where okay. I need one of my girl translators. Say that again? I have heard many nightmare stories through the years. I've lived here for 15 years. It does seem like it's getting better. But the free press is the cornerstone of a democracy, a healthy democracy. It cannot be understated. Without a free press, there can't be democracy. I read the newspapers when I'm here every day, and it seems to me that you guys are doing a good job, that it's getting better. For the last 16 years that I've been coming, I have noticed in the English papers that I read a much higher quality. Do you feel that it's getting better? Especially documented about the victim. 
Girls go, Kibitza, come here, be my translators. They ran away. You're my translators. Where are you? Okay. Hello. Who wants to ask me another question? This is what I try to do. I want you to think critically. Here I am, some weirdo American woman from New York. I look different from you. I'm very, very pale. I live in a very big city in the world's only superpower. There must be something that interests you, yes? yes. You can sit back there and just translate. Okay. Good afternoon, ma'am. Oh, good afternoon. No problem. Okay, there are like around 216 countries in the world, and why did you choose Nepal? You chose the Nepal. I think Nepal chose me. Um, I had been reading, I, as I said, I was always very interested in children's rights and in human rights. I've also always been very interested in the Hindu tradition and the South Asian tradition. And um, I was doing some reading about specifically Nepalese girls as a small landlocked country between these two rising industrial giants being abused. And uh, I came here, I don't know why. Who knows, it is a mystery. But when I came here and got off the plane, I said, oh, this is home. I felt this is home. I have traveled around the world. I have not felt like that before. It is you. Thank you. Maybe my past life, I think. Who knows? Yeah. Um, but there, at the same time, there's an openness I find in Nepal that warms my heart. There is an openness that is there. There's a lot of things that are, uh, need work, like any society, and a lot of darkness and a lot of poverty and a lot of gender inequality. But there's also a great beauty outside and in the people. All right, I want another question. Really hard hitting. It's World Press Freedom Journalism Day. Come on. Where are the women? Where did the one girl go? Hi. What is your Tvaki Nakeo? <laughs> Did he ask why I'm so beautiful? <laughs> yeah, they, I don't know, it just came that way. Um, he, everybody knows you're beautiful. The question is, he's telling you that if you have already started the work, or are, are you willing to start the work, like when are you going to start the work? Oh, that's a good question. So I've been doing this work for 15 years. Um, I already have, uh, I've been doing the work nonstop. It's exhausting and frustrating. And honestly, it can be frustrating, a woman coming from New York where things are so like this, and then in Nepal, you know, time, etc. cetera. Um, but if anybody wants to be a part of it or help, we are very open. I would love to have help if you'd like to be a part of it. So, yes, we've opened a resource center in New York. I've opened a number of schools here. I started a college that focused on liberal arts and the humanities because there's not enough liberal arts and humanities education here. So, um, I've been doing this work on some level, in some way, for 16 years, um, dealing with sometimes some very bad, difficult, distressing, things, but um, ultimately, it's a very beautiful, fulfilling work. Did I answer your question? Was that okay? Yes. Okay. Who else?
Rishi, you'll have to tell me where it is again. So, um, Rishi was telling me last night that there is an area here where there's a lot of accidents and no health care, a lot of vehicle accidents, and many, many people die there. Now, he told me that before he knew that my own darling, beloved stepdaughter died in her own tragic vehicle accident in a developing nation when she was studying environmental sustainability in Costa Rica. My daughter died in a tragic vehicle accident. So he has said, he was telling me about this area and he will let you know where it is. I forget where it is. Um, and that we are going to support, the Blue Butterfly is going to help build a hospital in this area where many people seem to die and the roads are terrible. All right, I want a question from the, from the young lady. <laughs> Why don't I speak Nepali? No, why don't I from the doctor that you think? Okay.